The 11th chapter of Acts, the 11th chapter of Acts, verse 18. Verse 18. This is after the Gentiles had first received the Holy Ghost, or the first Gentiles had received the Holy Ghost. And incidentally, they not only received the Holy Ghost, they were baptized in Jesus' name. Amen. I heard someone say here a while back that uh, baptism is not essential because God gave these folks the Holy Ghost before they were baptized. But they overlook in something. In the 10th chapter, closing verses, Peter commanded them that they should be baptized in the name of the Lord. And you ask me why God gave it to them first before they were baptized, I don't know. But it's all right with me. But I don't think that that was given as a precedent for you to say, I won't be baptized until I receive the Holy Ghost. I don't think it was given that way at all. I think the, um, the idea was that these people did not really know that they were eligible until they heard the Word of God preached unto them and God opened their heart while the Word was going forth and re they received the Holy Ghost. I'm talking about the baptism of the Holy Ghost. It could be worded, they were filled with the Holy Ghost. We'd be talking about the same thing. It could be worded, they received the Holy Ghost. It'd be talking, we'd be telling the same story. If you're talking about New Testament salvation, to receive, to be poured out upon, to be filled, to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. It's all interchangeable terms. You don't receive the Holy Spirit and later get the baptism of the Holy Spirit. When you receive the Holy Ghost, that is the baptism of the Holy Ghost. In the 11th chapter, the apostle was called in question. He had to meet the board, sort of. It was not the United Pentecostal Church Board of the Arkansas District. The word... United Pentecostal was never heard of at that time, of course, not fighting that, but it's just a simple fact. In those days, the church of Jesus Christ was just the church of Jesus Christ. I mean, in many cases, it was not even called church of Jesus Christ. It was just called the church, like the church at Ephesus or the church at Corinth or wherever. Just the church. The church means his bride, his wife, his beloved, his people. I'm glad to be a part of that people, aren't you? Amen. But Peter was called in question immediately after the revival in Caesarea and asked why and how come you went to the Gentiles. And we understand, said they, that you even did eat among them. And don't you know that it is not our custom to visit the Gentiles? They could have said, and to have anything to do with them. But... Uh, Peter began to tell them some wonderful things. He rehearsed the story just as it happened. How after prayer and fasting, how a sheet was let down. And in this vision, not reality, but in this vision, he saw a four-cornered sheet with all kinds of unclean meat on it, like horse flesh and catfish and uh, pigs. Owls, hawks, and other unclean beasts or fowls that you could think. All kinds of unclean as far as the Jewish customs and law is concerned. And God told him to eat this. And he said, not so, Lord, nothing common or unclean has entered into my mouth. None of this. I've, I've been a good Jew. I've lived according to the law. I have not defiled my body with the things that the scripture says are unclean. And this happened three times. And then someone called at the gate and it was people from Cornelius' house asking him to come and uh, tell them what they ought to do according to the 11th chapter that they might be saved. The Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Saved. Amen. Everybody say saved. Saved. I'm going to talk about repentance tonight. And I'm going to tell you that you cannot be saved without repentance. 
I'm going to tell you that repentance alone is not salvation. But I'm going to tell you that you can't get the Holy Ghost without repentance. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. There's a short commodity going on around here. We don't have enough repentance. I mean, people do wrong and won't repent of it. Sometimes people quit the church, stay out for years, and they say, I think about starting back to church. That's not enough. There needs to be some repentance involved. Amen. <clears throat> Talking about people who have committed sin need to repent. Yes. And uh, I think it's the 18th chapter of Luke when Jesus told about uh, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah and, and um, other things that happened, a great, a great catastrophe. Uh, he said, You shall all likewise perish unless you repent. Right. Except you repent, you'll perish like those people did when the judgment of God came upon them. You know, if we could really get the message of repentance and baptism through, if we could really penetrate, if we could really get this through into the hearts of people, there would be no problem of people receiving the Holy Ghost. I mean, it's, it's not you have to get the Holy Ghost. When you clean out the vessel, you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. There's another problem. Sometimes people receive it and won't accept it. Amen. They, they, they got it figured out. I remember we had a problem with Brother Leon Whitehead. He had a dream as how it was going to be when he received the Holy Ghost, and he had never experienced that feeling like he dreamed it was going to be, so he was never quite satisfied. I think he has been in later years, I suppose. But while he was attending the Drop Church, he was never quite satisfied. If God gives you the gift of the Holy Ghost and you speak with tongues, be satisfied with it. Praise the Lord. Come on. Praise God for His goodness. Why don't we glorify the Lord a little while? Here's one thing that Peter said. When they heard these things, they held their peace and they glorified God. Then hath God also to the Gentiles granted repentance unto life. This was the expression after Peter had preached to them. And they came to this conclusion that God had granted to the Gentiles repentance unto life. Now there's a repentance. I looked up the word repentance. I don't know everything, and I still have to use the dictionary once in a while, and sometimes I argue with it. Amen. But I guess it's right. It was here before I was. But uh, repentance, one, one meaning of the word repentance, to my amazement, was to creep. Now, that's not what we're talking about tonight. And I didn't even know that repent, repent ever had the meaning of to creep. But that's what Webster said. But I don't think that uh, that's what these people were talking to in reference to Peter's sermon. I don't think he said creeping. Well, maybe he did because I've seen a lot of creeping going on. You know, just mows. And one fellow preached a sermon in St. Louis and said, I'd like for someone to come to the altar. He said, why don't you mosey on down here to the altar? We've got too much moseying around now. <laughs> no. Meaning the scriptural meaning of repentance, according to Webster and according to the Word of God. You know, if you just take a passage of scripture sometimes, you'll know the meaning of the word that you're studying by the entire setting. That's right. Right. And we've been through this around the house by meaning of words and, and usually without a dictionary. If you look at the setting, you can come up with the meaning of the word, though the word may be foreign to you. Uh, so it is here, repentance and unto life. And go back to Acts 2.38, repent and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ. I never have gotten it through to some people that, that it takes both repentance and baptism to have remission or forgiveness of sin.